So this here, this is actually quite a, a nice little kind of granite um, texture here that uh, I can apply to this. Again, I'm not really overly concerned about the color. I'll color correct that and adjust that later. But what we can do is start to kind of fill in this. I'm not worried about covering those little kind of artery-like vines or um, tendril-like roots that are covering them there. I'm going to paint over top of this layer, uh, this later on. I'm just building in kind of a base for this right now. And it's actually probably a better idea to make sure you do overlap on those roots a bit so that when we do do our root uh, painting, we'll make sure to cover all of the surface there with um, texture detail. So I'm just moving along and filling it in. The other thing I should point out, you'll notice we do have some seams. Because we worked in UV space, we're gonna have some seams that we're gonna need to cover up, which is not a big deal. Um, because we're going over and breaking up these rocks here, you can see a bit of a seam in there. And I'm gonna be painting those roots up anyways, so that will cover that. Just fill that in a bit. Anyways, we can just keep painting and um, breaking up the surface here with the with the um, the different rocks, and that's the idea here: is going along and putting in a bunch of different materials, right? To to give him a bunch of different uh, boulders and rocks in there, and again, just keep building up some different uh, overall looks to that. Let's see what else we have here. This is kind of a gritty stone. So it would be nice to maybe put some of that into um, some of these guys here. Maybe this big rock, or this little rock here actually in the middle would be nice. And I'm just projecting it dead on there and I'm adjusting the angle of the geometry to fill in that um, the area there. And if you get any texture stretching going on, you can come in with the projection brush and fix that up quite nicely any seams that you seem to get um, as you're working with the UV space quick and easy way to fix it is with the projection brush there we go and the idea is we just keep taking a look at what we're doing how we're breaking it up uh, this map here let's apply that to this guy Make the brush a little bit bigger and just kind of put that detail onto the surface fill in the sides of that boulder. And that's fine. I'm actually going to stop right there um, for now. We could keep going on and on with this here. Uh, we're going to focus on a couple of other things here. One thing to point out while we're on this, um, let's take the rock base here and do the same thing we did with our bump. Now, Right away when I duplicate that, we're going to get some pretty gnarly effects because it's going to be multiplied much too high for what we want. But let's duplicate that overall um, rock based texture and bring it down to our bump map here and adjust that down. So we're going to get this pretty crazy bump going on from that. But uh, the nice thing about the opacity here, I uh, can see we have way too much bump going on on this guy here. So. Let's just adjust that down, dial it way down. And see we're getting some nice rock effect overall in there. Maybe just make it a little more subtle. And again, I can check what I'm getting there by, by turning off the rock base. So another thing to do here while we're painting is we haven't gotten to uh, painting the spec map yet, but the spec is really, the default spec that we're working with here is really quite shiny, so I'm just going to tone that down a bit, just for my own visual purposes here, and the gloss is going to give me a bit of a an edge here, it's going to make it a little bit wet um, as well on here, so if we sharpen that up and bring the spec in quite a bit. We're going to paint the spec map. All I'm doing here is just for my own my own uh, visual aid for now for painting rather than working with that big uh, flat kind of spec that was going across that surface there. So that's fine. We've toned it down a bit. 
Uh, we'll get into painting some of the spec maps there later. So you can see we're starting to break up the boulders on the surface there. Um, we have our, our simple rock base there, which is fine. And we can just keep going along. And then when we get into painting the roots, we can really break it up and start painting in some of those roots there. What we're going to do now is go back and continue painting um, some more bump maps here, this time with some stamps. So I'm going to create a whole new bump uh, layer on there. And this is going to be for the roots. So we'll create a new bump layer. And then what we're going to do is, is utilize just our simple paintbrush again. I'm going to use the black color on this and I'm going to use some stamps. So I'm going to turn my stencil off for now and jump into the stamps. Um, what we could certainly do is what we just did there with the, uh, the rock map to get this nice kind of subtle ambient bump going across the surface. Again, the idea with the layers, that's just a base bump. Uh, we're going to want to layer lots of different things on there, maybe different variations in the grit. Maybe some parts of the rock don't have any grit where you want to erase it. Maybe some scrapes, some scratches, some chips, things like that that we can keep adding to that. But it's always nice to start with a nice kind of broad uh, base map, um, diffuse or bump, just to have a good starting point to get uh, some of this detail baked in there. And the head as well, we're getting some detail in there, but we're certainly going to want to break up a lot of that as we go. Um, so with this tree here, I'm just going to quickly show some simple use of stamps for painting and some bump. Some of the default tools that are in Mudbox are great for this. So we have this rake tool, uh, which gives this nice kind of overall um, fall off. And there's this kind of fibrous um, tool in here as well. We could certainly use um, a bark texture or a different type of fibrous wood to paint on and, and work with what we just did there. But a nice way to get um, kind of going with the flow of these roots here is to use uh, a bump map here with one of these stamps. So I'm just going to switch between a couple of these. So the um, rake one will give us a, an overall nice effect on there. Um, let's actually turn my strength up a bit. Now that's a little too high. The brush is too big. And we're probably going to want to space that out a little bit. And let's turn down our overall strength. There we go. We can start to bring in, maybe put the strength up a little bit on that. And we just kind of start to gnarl up that surface. And we can vary the effect of that again by hitting our, holding down our control key to give us a different of effect on there so we're just kind of gnarling up the the root structure as we go making this look a little more kind of fibrous wood I'm just dragging that along and the nice thing is it's following the flow of the roots as I go so we're starting to get a little more of a kind of a grainy fibrous would look to this. And again, um, good idea to break it up and, and switch to different um, stamps. So if I switch to this kind of fibrous one here, I'm going to get a bit of a different effect going on in there. Um, get maybe a little bit more of a finer detail on there. Vary the, the strength as we go as well. And again, what we're going to want to do is we paint here. This is fine seeing the bump, but um, to give that kind of, you know, a bit of a faked uh, cavity ambient occlusion feel on there, we can duplicate this layer back up to our diffuse as well, right, to um, kind of give us that uh, a bit of a depth to it. So again, just like when we sculpted these, we're just following the the overall flow of the sculpt as we go with these stamps on here and you can see that we're getting some nice simple details in there following the flow of the roots uh, following the flow of the grain of the wood we're just kind of building that in now and it's really breaking up the surface rather than that um, kind of flowing kind of soft flowing uh, root structure we're really getting this kind of gnarled up wood that we can kind of layer over top So this area here, let's break that right up. You can see with stamps how quickly you can get these effects down as well. 
I should also point out I am sculpting or painting this on my high res the, or the top level sculpt. You can certainly get the same effect on a lower res if you wanted to go down. I like to work with all the detail I can, so I like to be able to see the, the sculpted effects as I'm painting. And you can see the VDM, a vector displacement stamp that it has, has some detail on there, which is nice. It kind of matches what I'm doing here with the, um, the sculpt uh, stamp bumps here. So that's fine. Another thing that we could do um, with some simple um, stamps is maybe break up the surface a little more. We could put in some cracks in there. There's a whole variety of different stamps. It's, it's limitless what you can do with the, the stamps in there. So let's, um, so there, I've just quickly gone along with the flow of the roots. Of course we want to do this along the back tree there as well. This is looking fine for now. We've got a nice kind of broken up gnarled root structure in there and just to show the difference of what we're working with with our bump maps in there so we had this kind of flowing kind of root structure and then with the using the bump maps in there we're breaking up that surface a bit and then to further add to it again let's duplicate that uh, that bump layer and bring it up to our diffuse layer there again And there we go. So now we can we can work with a bit of a, if we turn off our bump roots, you can see that we're actually getting that detail now as a shaded view, and that really adds to the bump uh, depth there as well. So you're getting kind of that faked cavity uh, ambient occlusion effect on there. So I think that's really breaking up the surface well. It's starting to look quite kind of gnarled tree-like, which is nice. And then of course we take this exact same idea here further right up on the back and we're going to want to do that with the tree. Again in the interest of time I'm not going to replicate these techniques over and over. Um, uh, I'm just going to show the technique here and the same technique is applied to all these roots here where you can quickly take a stamp and follow it along um, all of these roots to build up that uh, that detail on there. So. What we're going to do here in the, the next video is work on breaking up this texture here a little more. So we're going to step ahead and have a more completed um, uh, textured and detailed character. And we're going to break up some of the overall um, textured effects with some of our uh, adjustment tools down below here.